Hey everyone, Tankenstein here. In this video, I'll be reviewing the M1128 Wolfpack, of which is a currently 9.7 BR Tier 6 Premium Light Tank that sits in the American Ground Forces Tech Tree and costs 9,090 Golden Eagles. In this video, I'll be going over everything that you need to know about this vehicle, including its stats, how it plays, I'll give it strengths and weaknesses, I'll give some scores in several key areas, and then I'll give my final recommendation and if I feel this vehicle is worth purchasing or not. As always, please consider subscribing if you'd like more content like this, especially if you like guides, reviews, astrophotography, history videos, wolves, and more. But without further ado, let's get into the video. Now, as always, to start, I'll place its stats here on the side of the screen. Important stats to know are its top speed, armor thickness, and reload rate. Now for how the wolf pack plays. To start, it's important to note the two major differences between the M1128 wolf pack and the regular tech tree M1128 Striker. First, the Wolfpack lacks the M900 APF SDS shell and as a result receives the M833 APF SDS shell, which has around 130 millimeters lower armor pen at max compared to again the M900. This is why the BR of the Wolfpack is 9.7 BR compared to the 10.0 BR Striker in the regular tech tree, at least for now. Additionally, the Wolfpack lacks the option to mount the slat armor that the tech tree Striker has, though I don't really think many people will miss it as it weighs around 5 tons and quite frankly adds mediocre protection at best. In lieu of this, the Wolfpack receives the awesome camo netting that people love on the Premium Leopard 2A4. If you're familiar with the terminology that car manufacturers use, the regular Tech Tree Striker is like the Striker Limited, being a little bit more luxurious, whereas the Premium version is the Striker Sport, meaning that it is essentially a stripped down and lower BR Striker, but of course for purists. With all that out of the way, the Wolf Wolfpack is an extremely fast bullet of a vehicle that can flank, base cap, and scout extremely well, even if it doesn't really have the best maneuverability. Though it is large and also wheeled, it can reach 60 km per hour with extreme ease on most terrain, including even off-road. It achieves this with a decent though not amazing 18.7 horsepower per ton power to weight ratio, and the fact that it is, of course, 8-wheeled. On top of the Speed Demon is a 105mm auto-loaded cannon that can fire the aforementioned M833 APF SDS shells with nearly 400 millimeters of armor pen at a rate of one shot per 7.5 seconds. This is a guaranteed rate of fire so long as there are shells available in the autoloader. Additionally, the cannon sits above where the crew is, meaning that a shell that hits the cannon or where it's mounted will typically not damage the crew, as they sit a good amount lower than the cannon itself. Unfortunately, however, the wolf pack is extremely limited in terms of armor, and while it isn't quite as bad as the stat card indicates, as it's really around 12 millimeters plus 25 millimeters of Mexus armor on top of most of the vehicle, it is still killable using essentially anything, especially HE. This means that if an ATGM or an HE shell hits the cannon on top of the vehicle, the resultant blast will likely kill at least two of the three crew members inside of the wolf pack, making it an easy kill. In all though, the Striker is an excellent vehicle with a good cannon, decent enough APF SDS, and a ton of speed, making it ideal for flanking, scouting, and base capping, all as I mentioned before, though it can of course act as a mobile sniper as well. Do not frontline with this vehicle as it will die to anything that hits it that's larger than an HMG, and even still, there are some spots on the Wolfpack that do not have the additional 25mm of Mexus armor, and thus only have 12mm of armor, making those areas penable by HMGs. One last thing to note, because of where the cannon is, you can oftentimes sit behind cover, or a hill with just the uncrewed cannon being visible, which is a great way to protect your crew and also snipe enemies. Now for its strengths and weaknesses, and first for its strengths. It has Gen 3 thermals for both the gunner and commander as well as thermals for the driver, oddly enough. For its second strength, it features an autoloader, thus guaranteeing its 7.5 second reload. Third, the 105mm cannon sits well above the vehicle itself, meaning that penning shots will typically not injure or kill the crew. This also makes it so that hold down shots with the Wolfpack are far easier than with other tanks. For its fourth strength, it is extremely 
extremely fast overall with a nearly 20 horsepower per ton power to weight ratio and a 96 km per hour top speed in RB. For its fifth strength, it features a top mounted HMG which can help dispatch of lightly armored and unarmored targets including aircraft. Beyond this, it has access to smoke grenades of which launch four at a time for a total of three times which means that it has of course 12 grenades. For its seventh strength, it has surprisingly decent off-road mobility considering that it uses tires, it will oftentimes outpace even tracked vehicles. For its eighth strength, large portions of the interior of the striker are essentially empty space as far as War Thunder is concerned. As such, and with the propensity of most vehicles at and around this BR to use APF STS, you will see a large amount of non-damaging shots made against this vehicle, or at least shots that do limited damage. And finally, of course, it has premium RP and SL bonuses. Now for its weaknesses, it has poor armor all around the vehicle with just 12 millimeters of armor covering it on every side, with 25.4 millimeters of Mexus 2 and Mexus 2 C armor covering it around 85% of the hull, but of course there are still large portions of the hull, particularly in the back, that do not have that additional armor and are thus vulnerable to HMG fire. For the second weakness, though it's not an outright weakness, it lacks the M900 shell that the regular Tech Tree Striker receives. Though the Wolfpack does of course have a 0.3 lower BR because of this, the 130 millimeters of extra armor pen are, in my opinion, more than worth the increased BR, thus making the Wolfpack a fair amount worse than its regular Tech Tree counterpart. For its third weakness, it has a paltry 18 rounds of ammunition at max. Fourth, it is a very large and easy to hit target. For its fifth weakness, it has a surprisingly poor amount of vertical guidance between negative 5 and 15 degrees. Sixth, despite the large size of this vehicle, it only has three crew members, thus compounding its poor survivability issue. And finally, the Striker has poor turning capabilities. Now with all that said, let's go over how I scored this vehicle in several key areas. And first, for armament, I give it a 6 out of 10. The premium striker has many pros and cons in regards to his armament. On one hand, it has an autoloader and fairly decent armor pen. On the other hand, other vehicles such as the regular tech tree variant of this vehicle have much better armor pen with the M900 APF SDS shell, while the premium Leopard 2A4, of which has marginally better armor pen with its DM23 shell, has up to a 1.5 second better reload with its human loader, although this could get worse should that crew member die. To that point, I scored the premium Leopard 2A4 a 6.5 out of 10 in the firepower category. Because of that, I don't really feel like I can give the Wolfpack more than a 6 out of 10 for armament at least when looking at that Leopard 2A4. This is still a very good score based on my scoring criteria, but it lacks several key features, such as that M900 shell, a larger cannon size, being that this is of course only 105mm, which is becoming somewhat lackluster at this BR, especially considering it's sub 400mm of armor pen and mediocre cannon depression. In spite of these things, it's still fairly good, but nothing incredibly special. Plus, the autoloader isn't all too fast. It only normalizes the loading rate, which makes you superior to tanks with dead loaders, but in to fully crewed tanks and even many tanks with autoloaders themselves, such as T-80s, which have a one second better reload. If the Wolfpack had access to the M900, even if it had an increased BR to 10.0, I would likely give this vehicle a 7.25 out of 10 in the armament category. The M900 is a large amount better than the top level M833 APF SDS shell on the Wolfpack, and is more than worth the BR increase. Now for mobility, I give the Wolfpack an 8.5 out of 10. While the power to weight ratio on this vehicle is decent, it doesn't even match up with the ratios on some of the faster MBTs. The reason why the Striker excels is that it has wheels. This is also what makes it worse off-road, although not as much as you might think. Wheeled vehicles get a bad rap at lower BRs for their off-road performance, though the Striker can outperform many tracked vehicles on terrain like sand and snow, possibly due to the fact that it has eight wheels and possibly because War Thunder models the advances in rubber technology that have been had over the last few decades accurately and thus the wheels on the Striker are better than wheels on, for example, a World War II vehicle. Either way, the Wolfpack is both fast on and off-road, though it is a decent amount faster, of course, on-road. Now, for survivability, as you might have guessed, I will give it a 2.25 out of 10. While the stat card is deceiving, saying that the Wolfpack only has 12 millimeters of armor, whereas it mostly has around 37 millimeters of armor covering most of the hull, it still has very little armor and thus very little protection. This means that autocannons, strafing runs, and pretty much every single 
shell type can easily pierce this vehicle. With the exception of some areas on this vehicle that are not covered by the additional 25.6 millimeters of Mexus 2 II and 2C armor, such as parts on the rear of the vehicle, the Wolfpack can survive against HMG hits, but that's about it. Throw on the fact that it only has three crew members, two of which sit very closely together underneath the cannon, and you have a vehicle of nearly unsurpassed lack of survivability, at least at this BR. Without the Mexus armor, this would easily be a 2 out of 10 or likely even worse. Now overall, I give it a 6.5 out of 10. Don't get me wrong, this is actually a very good score. 6.5 out of 10 in my scale puts it in solidly great territory. The Wolfpack is fast, capably armed, and has a unique cannon setup that can protect it against damage and will allow you to get into unique firing positions. On the other hand, it has poor survivability and a so-so top-level APF SDS shell. In all, this is a great vehicle for people that like to run around maps and flank, but I feel that other vehicles in this category, namely the Rio Cat 105, are better relative to their own BRs than the Wolfpack. Still, the Premium Striker is a fun and powerful vehicle that is a light tanker's dream at this BR. Now, with that said, for my final recommendation, should you purchase the M1128 Wolfpack? Well, let's put its cost into perspective. It costs 9,090 Golden Eagles, which is more or less equivalent to around $45 USD when purchasing your Golden Eagles on Gaijin's website at the current rate. The Wolfpack costs around 25% less than the other current high BR premium option for the Americans, the XM1. Though the XM1, of course, comes with 2,000 Golden Eagles and 15 days of premium time within its bundle. In all, I think that the M1128 is a great vehicle and is tons of fun, though it definitely fits the style of a hit-and-run flanker or someone that likes to fire from beyond hills, whereas the XM1 is a bit more well-rounded, though it's still focused on speed as opposed to armor, but of course it has substantially better survivability and armor than the M1128 Wolfpack has. It's still a ton of fun and it is a great vehicle to have. I personally recommend the M1128 Wolfpack and give it my Tankenstein seal of approval, but you need to be wary of its shortcomings in that it lacks armor almost entirely and that you will need to learn weak spots on enemy tanks due to the fact that its best APF SDS is pretty good but not all that great. Otherwise, this vehicle is a monster on the battlefield. Now with all that said, Thank you so much for watching. Please, of course, consider liking this video and consider subscribing to my channel if you would like this kind of content. And also, please let me know what you think of this video and of the Wolfpack in the comments below. Either way, thanks again, and I'll see you all on the other side. Take care, everyone.